Good morning from St. Moritz. We got up really early today because we wanted to take nice pictures of this lake. It's now approximately 6 o'clock in the morning and today I want to start the vlog a little bit differently because I want Daniel to tell you his story and why he started with photography and how he became a member of the German Romers. I got first into photography in 2014 in New Zealand while I was backpacking the country. I studied mecha mechanical engineering before and worked in an office 9 to 5 and I didn't think that that was the life I want to live so I decided to quit that and buy a one-way plane, a one-way ticket to New Zealand, stay there for a year. I did some photography before but in New Zealand you had this really beautiful landscape and I was just in the perfect country to, to try it and in April 2015 I went on a workshop about Instagram and this is where I started to monetize my photography. I finally had the, the, the medium to share my photography with the world and this is where I got into photography in a professional way. In uh, August 2015 I joined German Romas and German Romas is basically a collective of photographers and I met them I met Johannes and Hannes in Canada while I was backpacking there too and we, we just came along really good and they liked my style so right now after I came back to Germany they invited me to join and it was suddenly so cool because out of nothing I had 15 friends to, to share my photography with and go on trips and go camping and they gave me tips how to make my Instagram grow bigger and how to make my photography even better. And that's basically my story. Good morning, how are you? Tell me something about um, your life. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, tell me something about your life. My life is pretty boring. I always get up at this time. And then I go to my couch and then have breakfast. When did the idea stuff. pop up in your head to um, to get up this mo this early <laughs> in like 250 days a year? <laughs> what's wrong with you? Uh, what's wrong with me? I don't pay much attention on how much I sleep or where I sleep or how good I sleep. It's just just a waste of time for me because you can sleep when you're when you're dead. And I prefer to get up early to spend the day outside or do something, just create something. So how, how, when did you start? Um, the whole photography thing started about two and a half, three years ago um, when I went into the Harz Mountains which, which is a region in Germany and I just took my phone and started taking pictures um, of the nature. It was my first time into nature. Um, before that I was in Berlin studying music production because I'm actually a musician. Um, but there were too many people, Just it was too crowded and I needed this fresh air to, just to breathe. I needed no people. And what happened after taking the pictures in the hunt? Um, I met Max Fischer, which was uh, another guy who took pictures in nature. Um, just a month later I heard about this idea about German Roamers, which is a collective of photographers um, from all over the country. Um, in the beginning we were 12 people, 12 photographers or amateur photographers that just like to, to be out in nature and to take pictures and to share it on Instagram. And then Pangea Productions, or at Pangea, um, founded the collective German Roamers, which was for us a good, um, a good way to come together, to take pictures together, to go out camping, to improve our skills, to talk about how we can get bigger on Instagram and to, how to build a community, basically. Was the motive of the German Romers to, to go traveling together in Germany? It was the why. We all, we all wanted to go outside, we all wanted to be in nature, to, to do something outside and the best thing you can do is to do something together because you're more, I don't know, you can, you can get immediate feedback from the other and you can inspire each other 
Um, I think that's that. That was the idea, just to to get the vibe to go out to do something um, in nature. So you, when you're out there, and I, do you really work with each other, or is it is there also sometimes um, some uh, jealousness or envy because one is getting a better shot than the other, or we're always like. Dang, I wish I had this shot. Dang, your your pictures are so much better. It's always the shot of the other is always better. Um, but it's kind of it thrives us to to improve our own skills, and we always um, talk about our own style and about the other, so we can both improve our photography. And it's more like a pushing each other, um, more constructive feedback than jealousness. There is actually no jealousness. It's more like. Um, of course, we have this competitive character, but this this gets us in the right direction, just to get better and to do more to improve our skills. We have slept a little, we have edited the videos that we uh, took this morning and if you look, this is the lake, you can see we are now on top of the mountain um, and we took the we took the train here and this is the little lake where we uh, took the photos this morning and now we are here, the sun is still quite high up there and we are researching spots on this mountain um, for the pictures that we will want to take uh, when the sun is uh, the sun is setting, so when the light is not as harsh as it is at the moment, because this is also really important for taking photos uh, during the day. The light um, from the sun is so strong and so so harsh that um, you have a lot of contrast in your face. For example, now I have lots of shadows in my face, and that doesn't look good on, on pictures. So, um, yeah, we're basically doing now all the research that we have to do for the pictures. And also, um, um, Max, uh, Daniel and I, we want to eat something and uh, talk about um, why we love traveling so much. There is basically no excuse not to travel. Yeah. Like the three main things are accommodation, food and transport. That's the main cost. And you can kill the first one by sleeping in a car. And you've got maybe the most expensive option for transport. But on the other side you're traveling with your whole room. And another advantage is then you can just load your truck with food and then you kind of kill the second two. So at first it sounds really expensive to rent a car for a week for about maybe 500 euros but if you save on accommodation 300 euros and you save on food maybe 100 euros for the week then it's worth it then you spend I don't know 200 euros on gas and that's much cheaper than going into a hostel or hotel absolutely because also with the car you can go everywhere yeah and if you just bring a second person suddenly all your costs are divided by two that's about three person, then it get like really cheap. Overnight buses in other countries. So that's what we did in um, Guatemala. So we saved time, the travel time, because it's just annoying to sit in the car for eight or ten hours where you can actually sleep. And 
you go there overnight so you can sleep basically in the bus and you don't lose a day just of traveling. You should get to know the world, how the world runs, how people are, like um, different cultures, how they how they live in a daily life and um, maybe you lose all your prejudices about them. Some trips are paid by clients but I like to spend my money on traveling because that's the only thing why I think it's the most sense, the most logical to spend it. I don't, I don't like to buy a TV for a thousand euros. Then I rather think for a thousand euros I can fly to Asia and travel to, I don't know, Thailand for two weeks. And it's all about the mindset. Some people are too materialistic and they complain that they can't travel because they buy all the fancy things. You don't need a big car or something. A small car does as well. And when you really don't have that much money, you can start traveling the area around you. I bet there are so many parts that you haven't seen yet. Remind yourself, if you want to, to go traveling and spend all the money on hotels, just to have a nice bed to sleep. Or if you want to just have a place to sleep. It doesn't matter how it looks, where it is. Um, for this reason we usually sleep in tents because it's not that cost intensive. Of course you have to buy a tent before but once you bought it you have it for a long time. Um, you can you can camp pretty much everywhere. Everywhere is allowed. So um, choose tent over hotel or, or go to the hostel or in a car, even in the car. To travel by car is yeah. the cheapest option to just sleep in it. Sleep in the boot or on the seat? Oh, on the seat, it works too. You can flip it back and it might be uncomfortable the first night and the second and the third, but then it gets better. <laughs> <laughs> you should try local specialties, you should try the local kitchen. And, but um, but that's like, that's it depends where you go. The local Swiss uh, kitchen oh, really? is <laughs> super expensive. That's right. Yeah, so this is one of the <laughs> The main issues that we have at the moment because we have a, a travel budget for the whole trip and Switzerland is crazy. I mean we have, each one of us is having one dish in the evening and it is as expensive as it was like being four days in Paris. It's, it's really, it's incredible. So what do you do about food? You buy your Just bring your own. Yeah, bring your own. Especially when you go to places to like Norway or Switzerland or where you know it's going to be expensive. Or where it's not too, too far or where it's allowed to bring your own food. With a car you're completely independent. And um, it's not like when you, when you go by plane you either need to get a car or you pay for a driver or a taxi all the time. Mm -hmm. But when you have a car and when you go to a country, uh, to a foreign country with a car, you can go everywhere. You're not, you're not dependent or, or bound to one place. Um, and this is what the, this trip shows. Um, we can basically, of course, there are limits to an electric car because there, there are not charging stations everywhere. But we can basically go wherever we want, you know. And um, this is what I really like about having a car in Europe because with a car in Europe you can see so many different places. I wouldn't go through the Alps by, by bus for example. It just yeah. takes so much time to cross the passes and go from point A to B. With a car you have much more flexibility and you can reach all the remote places when you have a bus. You sometimes need to stop at the big city, jump on a smaller bus, get out of the big city into a smaller one, then you have to hike maybe for two hours just to get to the trailhead where you could drive with a car because hitchhiking in Europe doesn't work so. <laughs> but that's yeah. another topic <laughs> yeah it works yeah. in other countries <laughs> so basically um, this day is all about photography a gang a, a gang a gang <laughs> again being out in nature and hopefully we could give you some um, nice advice about um, how we travel Europe and especially how these two guys travel um, the world and keep costs at a minimum because we know that most of you guys um, are, are young like us and don't have uh, a lot of money so cost is always an issue and um, with this being said 
we will now focus on trying to get as many beautiful shots of all these mountains around us and finish this video with a nice sunset and we see you tomorrow. Ciao ciao!